What's going on, everyone? My name is Impulse, and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 6. I, but I, I guess I don't really look like Impulse today, do I? Um, <laughs> it appears that I have been pranked. That is right. I mentioned last episode the need to get string so I could restock my strings and things. So, yeah, I've been AFK here at the string farm and just collecting string, and I AFK'd overnight. And I came back to find that uh, I have been pillaged, I guess? You've been pillaged is what it says. I've got a pillager head and some uh, random armor here that says I've been pillaged with um, Curse of Binding. <laughs> Great. Curse of Binding. Excellent. Uh, totem of Undying in the inventory, so okay. A prank with a little bit of reward, I guess. Uh, but yeah. Oh, another Totem of Undying. You say you've been pillaged. I believe this is the work of Azuma. <laughs> That's what happens when you leave yourself AFK. The other thing is, oh, some tragedy here. Okay, the, I was AFK for too long. I didn't take care of the dogs enough, and yeah, they must have been fighting some skeletons that had some thorns, and both of them have been killed, it looks like. Never did put in that system to make sure my dogs stay healed, you know, something where every once in a while maybe hit them with a healing potion. I should have put that in, what was, I, oh, I guess I'll use this. <laughs> I'm like, where's all, wait, where's all my stuff? All my stuff was in, oh, another one. Okay, all right, got a couple of totem of them dying out of the prank. Oh, we're gonna have to get him back. We're gonna have to get him back. I, he may have started a prank war, especially if he took my stuff. Where's my stuff? Oh. Is this it? Ah, there we go, okay. Oh, I was about to grab these and put them on, but yeah, I can't do that, of course, because you cannot take off Curse of Binding. Oh, and look at this, I got 117 levels of XP from being here because my dogs were killing those skeletons over there and I was getting XP for it. So yeah, I don't really wanna to have to go kill myself and lose this XP that I have. Hmm, what am I gonna do? I'm kind of thinking that maybe I'll challenge myself to keep this on for a while and just see how long I can put up <laughs> looking like this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? Um, anyway, I have more AFKing to do. Hopefully nothing happens while I'm AFK. Uh, but if it does, of course, I would lose the levels, but I would also then be free to put my gear back on. So it's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, I need to AFK a little bit more. I want to stock up strings and things. I got another cool project to do today and some other fun things to do here and there. It's going to be a good episode. It turns out this is going to be a little more challenging than I anticipated to make it through this episode without an elytra because I want to go up there. I want to go to Hermitville and check out this area that Green started. It's a mini game area. And I got an idea for a mini game today that I want to go try to put together. So I don't know how to get up there. Now, I remember Doc, didn't he make something to where if you stand right here or something? There's, there's a piston bolt. Or <laughs> didn't he make a piston bolt that's going to, like, take me over and up? How do you get in this thing? What is this over here? Um, I'm afraid to go down there because I might have a hard time getting out. Okay, well, it does look like there's some redstone and stuff. Let's, let's, let's risk it. Let's go in here and see exactly what is going on. Did Doc just not finish this thing? Whatever happened to Doc's project here? It looks like there's a cart. I have no idea what is going on down here. Ooh, that looks cool from here. Uh, what is going on here? I need to get back out of here. This is, uh, yeah, you kind of forget how difficult things are without an elytra. Okay, so it looks like this would have been, there's so much going on down here. Looks like this would have been where you kind of came down through. Okay, we got this going on. I'm just following stuff around. There's got to be a way to get above still, right? Is it got slime blocks? I am so confused. And now I'm afraid that I might be stuck down here. I just want to get to Hermitville. Oh, I think I found something. I think I found something. Here we go. Okay, so if we get in this cart and press this button, is it going to take... Oh, there we go. Excellent. Okay, this place looks great. We missed half of it, most of it. Okay. Oh gosh, this is scary. Am I supposed to? Whoa. Okay. We made it. 
Oh my gosh, I can't believe that actually worked. We made it. Awesome. All right, I have arrived. We are at Hermit Land. This is where some mini games are going in. It's going to be really fun. I'm excited for this to uh, come along here as more and more people, I'm sure, will come in here and put down some mini games. But I was just thinking about something. This whole predicament with me being stuck with this curse of binding pillager outfit. I think I might be able to do something about that or at least maybe take a little bit of a risk here. And if the risk doesn't pay off, it's still kind of a win-win situation. So Green has built this dig straight down game and I'm thinking I actually play it. So let's see, I'm gonna need, yeah, they're good. there's an inner chest here. I think it's five diamonds to play and there's a chance that we could earn some diamonds out of this. So let me go ahead and grab those, oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five. There we go, and we will put those back in there, and that back in there, okay. And then I think all of our stuff we can put in here, and then we can take one of these pickaxes and potentially get some good diamonds out of it. Oh, good, the fortune, so we could get, yeah, we could get a lot, and then a stack of dirt to kind of come back out. Let's see, looks like a lot of the holes have already been dug. There's still some right here, though. Okay, let me put all my stuff away. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. If we lose that gear, I mean, we're gonna lose that gear at some point. Curse of Binding is <laughs> uh, I did grab one. This is the only Ender Pearl I could find on my base, just in case we got stuck somewhere. And <laughs> it's the uh, DVD from Stress's advert. Um, okay, so five dollars diamonds needs to go in the payment box okay and then we get to take a pickaxe and we get to take some of this and okay and we go which one should we pick hmm choices 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 um i'm gonna go uh, is it too obvious that he would do good ones right here I'm gonna go for this one all right we're gonna dig straight down and hopefully we don't die to the happy fun sauce all right, we get some coal block. So far, no diamonds. Come on now. Okay, gold. I mean, like, if unless I get a good amount of diamonds, I might just keep on going. <laughs> so far, yeah, this is not lucrative at all. So we're just gonna keep going. We're just gonna keep risking it. I was just thinking, maybe I shouldn't have even bothered bringing that dirt with me because, <laughs> okay, here we go, first diamonds. And we got one out of the deal. This does have fortune three and we got one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So far we are not very lucky, are we? But we'll just keep digging, see what happens. Oh, and there it goes. There's no way we're getting out of this. Oh, I got one diamond. We only lost one diamond out of the deal. And I am no longer bound to that gear from the pillagers. So I'm good with it. Ah, oh, that is so much better. I look like me again, and now I can put back on my elytra and my other gear. <laughs> All right, we didn't win any diamonds, but we're still a winner today. All right, so I am in a test world now, and basically I wanted to come here and try out some ideas that I had, and we're gonna do that. I kind of alluded to it earlier, but just to kind of clear things up, we are going to try to do a mini game today in the new little mini game district that Green's setting up, which is why we were over there in the first place to kind of scope it out. But yeah, I had this idea a while back, and I wanted to start playing around with this idea of slime blocks because we all know slime blocks are great they're nice and bouncy and bouncing is always fun right trampolines and whatnot but i had this idea that what if we were able to hit this this slime block like harder than normal right basically you know you know if you fall you're hitting it at a bit of a speed and as you go down more, the higher you go, right? And so we can see that we lost a little bit of difference, uh, a distance there, I should say. And it's raining now, which is actually perfect. Uh, so I started thinking about different ways that we could kind of hit this block harder. Obviously, the higher you fall from, the further back it's going to, to bounce you back up. And then I started thinking, well, what if we used an elytra? And we kind of flew into this thing. And, you know, so I'll do this, I think. If I can take off. Is it the rain that's... There we go. So we're going up, and what if we were going down and we like really came at it hard? And that didn't seem to work. You can see we actually stopped on it. And I think that's because we're in flying mode. So that doesn't really work out. And then I thought about this. What about Riptide Tridents? Uh, which is why I kind of mentioned it raining right now is absolutely perfect, as long as we don't get struck by lightning, of course. So what if we do this? While it's raining, we can actually do the Riptide and come up and then back at it and look at that we picked up 
some tremendous speed and we're able to bounce ourselves up to 150 blocks up. Look at that. And it's all about the timing of this thing. I went past 160 that time. If we time it just right, we can really get up there 160 again. And then if we do scaffolding, we can actually kind of measure. There we go. We can measure how high we got by getting onto the scaffolding. And now this can become somewhat of a mini game. Now, of course, the downside of this is that it has to be raining. Uh, it has to be raining for the riptide to work. There we go. <laughs> and that's not great. That's that's not great at all. You know, the mini game can exist. People can have fun with it whilst it's raining, of course, which uh, it happens from time to time naturally, as you know. But also on the Hermitcraft server, we do have a way to summon the rain in if we really want to play. And so maybe we can use that concept to force it to rain so that we can play the game if we're not patient enough to just wait for the natural rain to come. All right, and for those of you that didn't know what I was talking about, about the ability to summon in rain, that's what I believe this is up here. Azuma had set this up a while ago, and I don't think I've ever used it. But basically, this has got some magic going on. It's got some command block magic, of course. And what you're supposed to do is basically throw a nether star in here, which of course is not easy to get. You gotta get three wither skulls, make a wither boss, fight the wither boss, kill the wither boss, and collect the the nether star. So it's not cheap to use, which is unfortunate. But uh, yeah, if we up here on top of the statue of Hermity were to stand here, throw that in, it would immediately start raining. At least that's the idea. Like I said, I've never tested it. So I think today we might have to test it. I might have to go hunt some wither skulls and all that kind of goodness. But the other problem that we're going to have is once it starts raining, rain only lasts a limited amount of time, right? Before it's going to stop. Of course, if there's other hermits online and they sleep, that could clear the weather as well. In fact, I think that's built in to the uh, one person sleeping bed system that we have here on the server. So we need to worry about that. So before I threw in a, another star into this thing, I definitely have to you know make sure all the other hermits are cool with not sleeping the, uh, the night away. But the other part about this is once that gets thrown in there, because it is going to be a limited time, we really need to get moving, right? We got to get on over to Hermitville, which is pretty far away. It's in the 1.4 lands, 1.14 lands, I should say. Um, so we got to go through that portal. We got to go up through here, up through here. Uh, and then we got to figure out which way we're going. It's to the east. And then we do the whole tunnel thing. So I kind of thought about this ahead of time. And we had this whole runway going on. And I thought, yeah, that's going to be way too slow. Um, flying through here works. It's pretty fast, but you are going to burn a lot of rockets. So I've gone ahead and restructured how these tunnels work. So you can see from this other tunnel, here's how initially we did it. Uh, we have just this guy going on with the trapdoors on top of the ice and the, the ice or the blocks there. And that kind of creates a small gap so you can run and jump and then you get going really fast on top of the ice there. But it doesn't work with boats and boats, you know, they travel really fast on ice. So if I was to take this boat and go over to this design over here, we're going to see a problem right away. And that is these trapdoors actually prevent the boats, boats from going very fast at all. And uh, oh, yeah, we still get that that boat glitch where we end up in the block, which is scary anyway. So what I've done is changed it up just a little bit. I had to take the trapdoors off the top of the ice and move them above your head for those that still want to do the run jump action. I've also had to move these stairs. So these stairs were kind of slowing down the boat as this part of the block right there would clip the boat because the boat is wider than a full block. And uh, yeah, it kind of hangs off the edge there as you can see. So I had to flip these around to create that gap. And then also it's really easy to steer off of the ice in a boat. Uh, so I put this, this glass up here, these glass panes to kind of keep you on the track and now we're able to get to Hermitville very very fast and we'll travel down here and uh, I did see this it looks like Azuma came in and said you know hey there's spots where we need to go off this track and get out and so he started by just kind of putting in a slow down area so you could stop the boat pretty quickly like I just did if you want to get off uh, downside of that is it's gonna slow you down as you're traveling through here like if I want to get to Hermitville I don't really want to be slowed down so I think he's gonna continue thinking about the best solution for that and uh, he's got some good ideas I can't wait to see which one he implements but uh, yeah Anyway, that should be coming soon. So yeah, we can now travel down here. We're not wasting rockets. We're not wasting food. And we're able to get to Hermitville much, much quicker. Now I gotta tell you guys, this actually took me 
hours. It took me multiple hours to switch all this around. That is one long track, even though with the boat, it really didn't seem that bad, but that is that is quite the distance. So as we step through this portal, now we can get to Hermitville. Um, I may want to also make a different portal that goes directly to the mini games, just to cut down on more time. Because yeah, like I said, once we throw in that nether star, I want to get to the mini game district very quickly. All right, I've done all the math to figure out the portal linking, and this is what I've determined. This portal should lead us directly to Hermitland and kind of right in front of the uh, Dig Straight Down game. And I think that's going to be a decent area for the portal. Just kind of looking around at the land. I feel like the games may end up going that way, may end up going that way. You can see Ravager Run back there as well. So, yeah, this whole area, this could end up being just about centered, I guess. I want to actually kind of go off this way, I think, because mine's going to pillar way up into the sky. It's going to be a bit of an eyesore, and yeah, I kind of want it to be out of the way a bit. So let's come over here, and maybe, yeah, just kind of maybe on the shore, just over here. I don't want to get too, too far away, and maybe come down even lower. All right, we'll head back this way. Yeah, it's always tough finding the perfect spot, but yeah, maybe about here or so. We'll build the game up. I'll clear some of this area out, get some things prepared. It's actually a very simple game to build, which is nice. Should be quick for us to do, except I'm not looking forward to doing all the signs that are going to tell you how high you made it, so that's going to be tedious. But uh, let me clear this out and start building this thing up. So there you go, I have done it. We are way up here and yes, placing 128 signs and numbering them was very, very tedious as I was worried about, but that's okay, it is done now. We got a spectacular view from up here. And as I stand up here, I realized, you know what, our game could actually be played without rain and without tridents if we wanted to. We could simply just say, climb to the top, jump off, and then, just see how high you get. And that could be a game in itself. So we got to 37 there, I guess. I mean, we're technically standing on 36, but that's okay. Uh, we'll call it 37 wherever we're looking at eye level. So I have to make note of that. But yeah, this game could still technically be played without doing the whole Riptide thing. Um, so maybe we do like two game modes, basically. One where it's just climb to the top and see how high up you can go on the, on the rebound. And second mode would be if it happens to be raining or if you want to trigger rain, then you could come in here with the Riptide. Of course, we have to try that today. Uh, I want to make sure that that uh, weather station works and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to try that here in a little bit. There's still a few people on the server that uh, may not love the idea of not sleeping through the night, but maybe we can trigger it at the beginning of a day and that might give us enough time to try it out. But anyway, we're going to need to at least have some sort of instructions and maybe make this place look a little bit better. So I'm going to try to clean this place up, put together an instruction booklet, and uh, after that we'll, we'll give this thing a test run. All right, there we go. I've given it a little bit of decoration now, and we have some instructions, and we'll check these out real quick. It says, Welcome to iBounce. Yep, couldn't come up with a better name than that, so we're calling it iBounce. The object of the game is to jump from the top of the scaffolding pillar and bounce off the slime blocks below as high as you can. At the top of your bounce, land on the scaffolding and see how high up you made it. You may take three attempts for each diamond paid for entrance. Record your highest score on the page three of this book. Alternatively, if it is raining, use the trident provided to riptide into the slime block for higher rebound. Record the highest riptide score on page four. Good luck. 
So here we go, page three. We got high scores on normal mode. That's just jumping from the top. And I'm gonna give it a go here in a second. And on page four, if we get the rain to come here, we can try to do this with the riptide. And there you go. So that is gonna do it. We'll put this back on. Wait, does that, um, if you leave this on page two, does it remember? Oh, it does. Okay, so we gotta remember to reset the book. It's the first time I've really used this for reading books. And that's pretty cool though. Uh, and then over here we have our chest for the payment so they can put in a diamond to make the attempt And if they're gonna get the riptide, we got the letter rip uh, <laughs> Tried it here that they could use got many in riptide 3 and I'm breaking 3 So hopefully it'll last for at least 249 if not more because of the unbreaking attempts here And yeah, it's middle of the day. So I'm gonna climb the ladder I, I thought about this too like it might be how hard is it to fly to the top of the ladder like is it very difficult? I mean, at least if you do this and then you kind of like, can you, oh, you can't. I was trying to just like hold shift and see if it would let me, no, oh, it won't, it won't, it, wait, there we go, kind of. Uh, I guess that's better than climbing the whole thing. <laughs> I was thinking about maybe making a landing strip up here so people could fly and land easier to the very top because climbing scaffolding does take quite a bit of time. But uh, there we go. Okay, so I'm at the top and I'm basically just going to walk off the ledge here. Maybe come back just a little bit, turn around and we hit and we're coming back up and we can walk forward. Okay, so I think I could have done better. I think I could have got 38. So our first attempt was 37. Okay, we're back at the top again. I think this time I'm gonna back up off of this and we'll just do it like that. Okay, let's see. So gotta watch those numbers carefully. And as soon as, yes, there we go. As soon as I felt it slow down, I started to walk forward. So this time we got 38. So we did one better than before. Okay, third and final attempt. Let's see if we can do better than 38. Here we go, going down, going up and Oh, 38 again. I wonder if this is going to be the max score, if we've already nailed it on our second and third attempts. If so, uh, this game might not be that much fun, but it will be fun to see other hermits try it. Really, I think the real fun part of this game is going to be doing the ripped, Riptide mode. All right, so let's go ahead and update the score. And apparently you can't edit a book while it's in here, so we got to pick it up take it and bring it over here. So that was normal mode and we got 38. All right, we will put that back down there. And I think it's time that we try to initiate Operation Create Rain. Okay, we are on top of the shrine here and I have my nether star ready to go. I believe I just toss it down and then it's gonna be a race to get back to Hermitville or uh, you know the game's land. And, oh, there we go. I got struck, okay. And already it's, okay, I didn't expect to get struck by lightning. It is raining, okay, that is good. So that actually worked, cost us another star to do it. That was not cheap. Now we are on a mission to get to this place and try the riptide. Oh my goodness, I'm excited about this. All right, so we get in the nether hub. We need to get up there as fast as possible. And, oh, oh, we're getting a little bit of lag. It must be from the portal. Okay, I pre-set up a boat so we would save some time here. Yeah, it does really feel like this is a race. I don't want that rain to go away on its own, at least not for a little bit. All right, we've made it to Hermitland, and it is still raining. That is good. Excellent. So, let's see. Cub is on the server. Mumbo's AFK, and I warned Cub that I was doing this, so hopefully he will, uh, <laughs> he won't sleep away the rain or anything like this. So now we should be able to just do this to get up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is so awesome. Let's see how high we can get. Oh, it's going to take a lot of attempts just to get up this thing. I wonder if we can really get to the top. Yeah, we can. Okay. Oh, that's gonna hurt a little bit. Okay, we probably don't want to do that. Oh, that was good, okay. So now the idea is we can still climb to the top and yeah, definitely want to put that landing pad up here because that was kind of a pain to do. I just wanted to do that as fast as possible. But now we're on the very top, we can jump off, same as we did before, but now we want to do this right before and see what we can get. Oh my goodness, a 100 on that one. Okay, wow, that went higher than I thought it was gonna go. Okay, so that's, that's attempt number one. As you can tell, I'm in a bit of a hurry here because I really don't want that rain to go away. I wanna see if we can get in all three attempts. So we had 100 on the first one. Now I'm starting to wonder if I even built this thing high enough. All right, let's do this one more time. Do it there and watching the numbers, starting to slow down. 
101. Okay, not much better, but I really feel like the release point could have been better. Let me go back to trying to walk off the platform backwards, and then we'll see if we can see the numbers a little bit better. Okay, here we go, walking off. Oh, yep, be careful. And now, okay, that felt good. That felt pretty good. 105, there we go. <laughs> How awesome is this game? This is so much fun. 105. I wonder if I was to do this kind of over and over again, uh, could we actually get higher than the tower? So instead of instead of just doing it off of the first bounce, which is the rule, by the way, uh, I just you only get one bounce. What if we were to just for fun? Let's try this out. Let's do now, and then as we come back down, well, we're still coming down from a lower spot, but let's see if we can. I need to look at the numbers, but I want to do like three of these. I want to feel good about that. No. Okay, so jumping from the top is still better than trying to pull the Riptide back uh, over and over again. So yeah, definitely want to climb all the way to the top. Okay, 105, I believe, was the number. That's it. I'm going to take my three turns. I'm going to put it in the book. I'm not going to cheat. But uh, yeah, for, for the cost of, you know, one little nether star, you can initiate rain and play this game. <laughs> Oh man, hopefully, okay. Well, apparently we, we drew a crowd. They, they really wanted to, to watch this show. All right, well, that's not the, uh, the best way to greet your fans there as they come to just watch you do your little show. But uh, I think, whoa, whoa, did you see that? The screen was like shaking, that was weird. Uh, I think that'll do it. I think we can sleep the night away now, sleep the rain away, and we'll record our score. All right, page four, high score, Riptide 105. I think that's a pretty good score. I think it's going to hold up. We're, we'll see uh, what the other hermits get. I can't wait to find out how they do on this. I feel pretty good, though. I, I did have a little bit of practice. What was that noise? Oh. <laughs> I think I need to turn into a drown, and I heard that. Okay. Yeah, so there we go. That's going to be fun. And maybe... Oh, i got to put this back. I almost forgot. Yeah, we need to leave that in there for them to use. So, yeah, used up a couple more durability. But I think this will hold up for a while. I'll keep my eye on it. If we need to mend it to repair it, we can. But what a fun game. I think it's pretty fun. It's pretty simple, but I think it's still going to be pretty fun for the Hermits to play. But that's going to do it for me today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button if you're not subscribed. Make sure you do that before you go. And with that said, I'll see you guys again next time. Have a good one, everyone.